to give this. Uh, yes, welcome to this session on DHS2 as data warehouse country implementation stories. And we have four presentations for this hour, which means we, we, we'll have to be quite condensed. We'll do it as in other sessions that we do all presentations first, and then uh, we have the questions at the end. But you are, free, free, uh, of course, free to post your questions in the chat or in the community of practice web page throughout the presentations. We have a presentation on HISP South Africa from HISP South Africa by Moeti Mboso and Tanya Govender. And we have two presentations from Indonesia, Barry Adrian and uh, Mohamed Aftal. Thank you. Um, good day and welcome to all of our attendees joining us from all over the world this afternoon. My name is Tanya Govender and together with my colleague Moeti Mposo, we will be taking you through our presentation for the day, which demonstrates how we utilized DHIS2 as a data warehouse, together with other components through interoperability to provide a human resources for health solution to the Ministry of Health in South Africa. And just three and a half months after the start of the coronavirus pandemic in Wuhan, China, South Africa confirms its first coronavirus case in March 2020. Shortly after that, our President Cyril Ramaphosa declares a national state of disaster and announces an immediate travel restrictions and closure of all schools. A national coronavirus command council was established to lead the nation's plan to contain the spread and mitigate the negative impact of the coronavirus in South Africa. Immediate questions from the National Coronavirus Command Council were regarding the workforce that would take care of our sick, requiring information on how many healthcare workers we have within each facility, and also identifying where our specialists are, for example, our intensive care health workers. To support the procurement and distribution planning, there was an urgent need to know how much personal protection equipment would be required and where would the stock need to be directed to. As the virus spread throughout the country, the number of infected healthcare workers were rising rapidly. We needed to respond to questions on where the infected healthcare workers are and how can the remaining staff be redistributed to continue attending to the sick. South Africa receives its first batch of vaccines in February 2021, and the rollout commenced shortly after, with the priority to vaccinate all healthcare workers. The vaccine rollout planning required us to respond to how many vaccines were required for the healthcare workers and where should the vaccines be distributed? To respond efficiently to these requests, I would like to introduce you to South Africa's Human Resources Information System and how through interoperability, we were able to pull data from multiple data sources together to get the answers that we were looking for. But before we get there, it is important to mention that our initial approach was to immediately leverage our existing systems, which include our routine health system in DHIS2, which is the national platform for health data reporting. In South Africa, we were not starting from scratch. We had long been planning how to manage the health workforce more efficiently and effectively. This process began with the concept of aligning the human resources information system to the National Department of Health's human resources strategy. The strategy can be summarized to these five areas. Effective workforce planning for current and future needs, institutionalized data-driven policies for planning, having a competent and multidisciplinary health workforce, 
ensuring optimal governance in leadership and management, and building a productive and empowered workforce. The systems that support the human resources strategy lives within an integrated ecosystem with multiple contributing components. Here is an overview of the current components. The first component is our human resources for health registry. This is our authoritative repository of all the healthcare workers in South Africa. It is developed in alignment with the IHE profiles on a fire registry. Followed by our second component, which is the human resources warehouse. This is where aggregated data from the registry sits and is used for planning and reporting. This is created in DHIS2. The third component is created using the DHIS2 web app. It is the human resources for health portal which is the web interface for users to engage with the data for management and planning. And our fourth component is a custom app that is currently being developed in HISP South Africa. It is our human resources planner module that will be utilized for scenario-based and use case planning and predictions. The current system is still flexible and allows for additional components and further interoperability channels. I would now like to hand over to my colleague Moeti, who is our senior data engineer, and he will take us through a look into the HRIS architecture. Over to you, Moeti. Thank you, Tanya. Can I just quickly get confirmation if my voice is coming through okay? Yes, I can hear you, go ahead. All right, good day all watching. The current slide shows a simplified view of the HRIS architecture. I'll present the architecture by going through the information flow across its different components. We have inflow of data coming in from different primary data sources, which includes a government payment system with records of public sector personnel, statutory councils, and the private sector. The inflow data is basically demographic information about individual health workers. We have a staging platform, which is responsible for two major processes. The processing of inflow data coming in from the primary data sources, and data aggregation for reporting. The preferred way of receiving data from primary data sources is in HL7 FHIR format. However, the HRIS system is able to receive data in any digital format. All right, this capability is achieved by establishing the activities required for transforming the source data into FHIR resources, and then automating those activities using Apache Airflow which is an open source ETL tool. Data sits within the HRIS system at different levels of detail. The HRH registry stores a detailed view of a health work practitioner record, which is consolidated from data coming in from the different primary data sources. The registry is implemented using Happy Fire, an open source fire server. The following is, is an example of a fire practitioner and practitioner role resources housed within the HRH registry. The, the, the resources lengths and details have been shortened for, for display purposes here. Yeah. The HRH data warehouse stores aggregated data for HRH planning and reporting. It is implemented using DHIS2. This slide here is showing aggregated data on the DHIS2 dashboard. We can use any DHIS2 favorite for, for analysis of our data. 
Other databases used in SAE are also part of the, the HRIS architecture, such as the national routine data coming from DHS2, the master facility list, COVID response systems, training information systems, and others. The interoperability component provides access to the HRIS system for interoperability. It is implemented using OpenHIM, also an open source software. For COVID response, in answering the questions that Tanya mentioned earlier, we established interoperability with the SA COVID data lake to determine health workers affected by with COVID. We also connected and provide a list of all health workers in the country who are eligible for vaccination. The interoperability component is also used to manage the outflow of data from the multiple repositories we've just seen within the HRIS system. This can be for reporting, querying, or application development. Reporting within the HRIS system is, is done in multiple formats. Firstly, we have DHIS2 data visualizations and dashboards for aggregated reporting. This is an example of HR data analyzed using DHIS2 pivot table. When we have a request coming for analysis, we create the favorite in DHIS2 first in order to finalize the details of the report. We also use BI solutions for more advanced reports, reporting that can be done on both aggregated and granular data. We currently use this, uh, we, we, we currently use Power BI for, for, for this capability. Uh, this report right now is showing a report a, uh, prepared in Power BI. We have pulled data from the HRIS data warehouse in the HIS2. We can also pull data from other repositories via the interoperability component to analyze it all in a single platform. Once we are happy with this report, we will publish it on the web portal. The web portal is another component. The web portal is a custom DHIS2 app developed using leaflet and custom graphing libraries. It is installed on the HRH data warehouse. The slide you're looking at now is showing data in the web portal. This specific report shows health workers at a facility level, categorized by occupation category, gender, age group, and race. This dashboard is interactive. Drilling down or up is possible through the org unit hierarchy on the left. A future feature he's started developing is a HR planning module. This would facilitate scenario planning from a current state to a future desired state and stipulate what are the inputs desired, required to, to reach that desired end state. It would facilitate the ministry to establish effective health workforce planning to ensure alignment with current and future needs. It will assist institutionalized data-driven and research-informed health workforce policy, planning, management, and, and investment. This concludes the overview on the HRIS architecture. For ongoing work, we are currently working with primary data sources to improve data quality. We are also still developing the HR planning module. We are looking to develop machine learning and predictive analytic models to facilitate future planning. We plan to work with stakeholders to enhance analytic outputs to facilitate better insights and planning. And we will continue moving forward to enabling the Ministry of Health to reach the HRH strategic goals. This is the end of our presentation. We would like to acknowledge our partners that are working with us on this project. 
CDC, National Department of Health, and PEPFA. If you'd like to connect with us, please reach out, reach out to us using these contact details shown here. Thank you all for your attention. Back to you, Johan. Thank you very much. And I think we'll then move on to the first um, presentation from Indonesia. Uh, very Adrian, do you go first? Thank you, Johan. Can I start our presentation now? Yes, please. Okay, please let me share our presentation. I think you should have the authority to, to do that. Sorry, uh, wait, maybe I have to share screen, okay. Okay, first of all, good evening from Jakarta, Indonesia. Thank you for the opportunity that's given to us to share our presentation in this respectful event. I, Ferry Adrian, will try our best to present our presentation. Uh, please let me first introduce about Jakarta. Jakarta is one of 34 province in Indonesia and act as the capital city of Indonesia. Consists of six districts with over 10 million people live in Jakarta. And yesterday, we just celebrating our 494th birthday. In today's digital environment, the importance of data is greater than ever before. And it's critical that organization are utilizing their data to make informed decision in real time. For most organization like Jakarta Department of Health, lacking data is not an issue, but determining how to prioritize data and put it into action is a common challenge. Although Jakarta has shown a lot of progress in implementing digital health services, such as teleconsultation, tracing and tracking infectious disease, such as for COVID-19 and others, but it still leaves some basic problems, especially related to data management. There is still a lot of data that is fragmented and only known and or used by certain units people are still arguing about whose data is correct and other problems. Perhaps like many other organization, the demand for data integration arise from complex data environment where various multiple system and or manual reports are creating big data. The process of recording and reporting from various sources need to be facilitated so that it can run well and easily. Easy to access, easy to input, easy to store, easy to visualize, and of course, easy to analyze. In this case, the Jakarta Department of Health chooses DHIS2 as the platform to integrate various e-reporting system in the form of data warehouse, which already has some modules. Last month, we had the opportunity to present the protocol of the Jakarta Department of Health in developing our data warehouse at the IFIP conference. So on this occasion, we will try to present one of the modules in our data warehouse. The immunization module is one of the priorities because immunization data is needed in various reports, both for the internal Jakarta Department of Health and also for the external that is required by the Ministry of Health and the Jakarta Provincial Government. Immunization data is also one of the indicators used to assessing the performance of the governor and the head of the Jakarta Department of Health. 
So the provision of immunization data that is easily accessible by leaders has an impact on making policies related to public health. One of the modules that we built is the local area monitoring module for, mod for immunization. This module was developed based on a manual report in Excel format that has been standardized by Indonesian Ministry of Health since approximately 2004. And since its, its introduction until now, there has never been a significant change. Not only in this reporting format outdated, but it's also burdensome for immunization officers because the number of the field that must be filled, the report in the form of a very long landscape format, and often the final result does not match the manual data due to the formula error in one or more cells, which result in errors in various other cells. So the challenge in developing data warehouse and its modules are for working with the timely data, removing remove all the data silos, build a smart architecture, uh, data security issues, and then also we have to keep up with the trends in the common challenge for the organization to match the targets needed to win, and also data from newer units or user demands. And some problems in daily practice related to manual immunization data reporting, data validation and verification, and difficulty in visualizing data. These are the, the, the problems that we used to face before we have the uh, modules in data warehouse uh, platform. So our goals by developing data warehouse and its modules are to speed up the process of reporting and collecting health data, is data visualization and analysis, integration and synchronization of health data. We believe the benefit, the benefit from these projects is a, a better collaboration and deployment, availability of real-time integrated data, data from multiple distributed sources can be collected, helps in achieving better partnership and customer relationship, saves time, boosts efficiency and reduce error, and of course, making excellent public policy. We would like to thank you to all Oslo DHIS2 team, and especially to Professor Yorn, that, uh, that given so much support for us, and not to forget to all the committee who already held this event. Thank you from Jakarta. We back to you, Johan. Thank you very much, Betty. Then I think we'll just move to the last uh, presenter, um, Mohamed Aftal, also from Indonesia, before we have a round of, of questions. Yeah. Thank you very much, Mr. Johan. Uh, let me share my screen first. <laughs> Can you see my screen? Hello? Yes, we can see your screen. Oh, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, let me introduce myself. Um, I will represent our team, Muhammad Afdal, to uh, present our, our project entitled Digital Implementation for Healthy City, Case Study in Macassar City. Um, first of all, let us uh, introduce our project. This is uh, the project is namely Building Healthy Cities project. This is a five year learning project, start for, starting from 2012 until 2022. This project uh, has been have been implementing in four cities, indoor in India, Makassar in Indonesia, Danang in Vietnam, and also uh, Kathmandu in Nepal. Um, the Building Healthy Cities project um, is implementing the system approach uh, to for the project implementations that encourage multi-sectoral collaboration that include health, uh, urban planning and development, information and communication, women and child department, nutrition and food safety, education, water and sanitation, waste management, uh, transport and tourism department. Uh, from this uh, 
um, system approach, we we found that there are three key issues to achieve uh, the healthy urban planning. That are, they are data driven learning, citizens empowerment, and also uh, multi sectoral engagement. Um, the goals of our project is to support uh, healthier urban planning. The uh, one of Macassar City, we found that the, uh, the biggest demand is uh, to support better data integrations from the different sectors. This is to uh, to build the decision making that's coming from the comprehensive data from the different sectors. And uh, how does the data integration make the city healthier? Uh, first, the data. Um, is the key is the key role in multi-sectoral collaborations. This is encourage uh, different sectors to have um, a collaboration to address the social determinants of health. Uh, also, the integrated data actually can um, allow the cities to more quickly identify potential head risks, including pandemics, uh, COVID-19, uh, environmental issues, and, and also um, climate change. Uh, also, this uh, integration of the data can also highlight the, uh, uh, the vulnerable uh, group that have uh, health risks due to disparities in, disparities in service coverage. So uh, from, from those analysis, we, uh, the Building Healthy Cities project is trying to increase the quality of data, increase the accessibility and timeliness of data for, for decision making. And then we decided to, um, to use a consistent and user-friendly data sharing platform. Uh, also, we, we try to train uh, the, the city officers uh, for using technology for good implementations. And also we are improving uh, the quality of data. We improve also the trust between sector in using uh, data, each other, the data each other. And also we are gaining full and timely access to community data. So uh, from, from, from this context, we are using the DHI2 platform to fulfill the, the demand. So we, we are using the DHI2 platform to integrate data from the different sectors um, based on the uh, Healthy City um, program in Indonesia. So let us introduce first the Healthy City program is, has been running starting on 25 with around 170 uh, healthy city indicators. These 170 uh, indicators is coming from the different sectors, including uh, housing and uh, housing and infrastructure, uh, traffic, uh, transportation, mining, tourism, uh, and etc. So the, the healthy city program in national level uh, li is led by the Ministry of Home Affairs and also uh, Ministry of uh, Health. Uh, this is uh, our summary of our process. So starting on the initial meeting with the University of Oslo team at the annual conference 2019. Uh, and then moving to one year later, September 2020, uh, during pandemic, the BLC held a webinar to improve awareness of uh, data integrations uh, to the city that attended uh, they attended by uh, 200 stakeholders from the different sectors, including also uh, the mayor itself. And then uh, one month later, November 2020, BSC also uh, initiated the working group uh, for multi-sectoral data integrations. As you know, this is uh, uh, to integrate data from the different sectors. This team uh, need to have leading sectors, where in this context, the BAPODA or the city planning and the development agency is leading this process so, so uh, we can encourage different sectors to, to share the data. So in December 2020, we, we, uh, we held a meeting, a technical meeting with the DHIS2 uh, based on in Indonesia. So we, we plan for a uh, free technical planning for this process. In March 2021, the BSC also held two days uh, virtual workshop to define operational definitions, including um, numerator and, and denominator for each of those 170 indicators to be integrated into the HS2 platform. And uh, in April, we have we had a workshop of, of, of data collections, also in the virtual because of pandemic. Uh, this is a summary of uh, our our metadata. So we developed the metadata into the DHS2 platform that is included 
170 um, indicators that's coming from different sectors, health, environment, threat and industry, education, social, housing, trans transportation, public source, and, and, and tourism. And then we, we visualize it into the dashboard of the HS2. And also uh, from the government side, we are, we are also uh, developing the standard of operating procedure. So um, every, every sectors under the, under the city can share the data which is the standardized mechanism and also agreements. Um, this is um, a summary of our uh, 170 indicators. So uh, there are seven main areas we included into the uh, the HS2 platform. First is um, healthy settlements and facilities infrastructure, traffic and facilities, uh, industry and tourism, uh, so healthy societies, security and nutrition. Also, we have we have added also the minimum health standards from uh, from non-communicable disease into the HS2 platform that include health service for children at uh, elementary school. Uh, service for productive age, elderly, hypertension, diabetes, and also mental health. Also, um, there were a request coming from the leading sectors that uh, the city develop, city planning and development agency to include also the poverty issue and stunting issue into our uh, data integrations. Um, of course, in our process, there are some of challenges. So here our our uh, best practice. So due to pandemic, uh, there's there are a lot of um, restrictions. So we converted every process into online or or virtual base. And also um, uh, during the process, uh, there are some of issues around um, data securities coming from the different sectors. So they are aware on 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 uh, how other sectors using their data. So. We, we initiate something like a memorandum of uh, understanding or memorandum of action. So every department can um, have an agreement on that, can uh, also uh, agree on a standardized mechanism to share, to share the data. <laughs> also, um, the last thing is, is uh, there, are, there are some of uh, uh, different sectors ego here, uh, we initiate uh, something like the leading sectors, which we have mentioned in the in the previous in the previous slide that uh, the city uh, planning and development agency lead lead this process to ensure uh, data sharing from uh, different sectors. I think that's all. Uh, thank you very much for all the attention from the participants. So now we're going to hear to the last presenter, Walid Waziri from Afghanistan, who is going to present DHIS2 as a data warehouse in Afghanistan. Hi, Walid. Hi, can you see my screen? Yes, we can. Um, yeah, perfect. Yeah, I'm. Uh, thank you so much for the opportunity and I'm, I'm really excited for this uh, presentation. Uh, by the way, uh, I'm really apologize for uh, there's a background noise that's uh, currently we are uh, suffering from the electricity and I, uh, there's a generator sound. So I hope that wouldn't be that much disturber. No problem, please go ahead. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, so as you mentioned, so I would like to present uh, DHIST use uh, as a uh, MOPH or health data warehousing in Afghanistan. My name is Walid Waziri. I'm a senior advisor um, for data quality. Uh, previously, I uh, lead the at, uh, DHI stream implementation at the country. Uh, we are uh, as working as a partner to go with uh, Minister of Public Health uh, uh, through USID projects. Uh, during the presentation, uh, 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 we'll talk about the specific objective of this uh, project and also how the, uh, the DHIS2 were selected and uh, the, what we accomplished uh, from this implementation and uh, the different DHIS2 modules we will talk about about and also uh, the different data marts and or data sources. Uh, I will highlight some uh, those uh, data marts and also uh, some statistics from uh, our current instance uh, and also the roadmap or the envision that we have for 
project in the future, and also during the implementation, what were uh, the challenges that we faced? Uh, the main objective of uh, or the initiative that uh, we uh, started uh, or because that access to health data was very limited uh, in the country. Uh, there was um, offline MS access based system that it has some limitation and also uh, whenever some party or uh, uh, someone uh, would like to access their health data. So it takes uh, a lot of time to access that data. And also um, uh, data analysis or data visualization was not that much easy because uh, no one is uh, that much expert in uh, MS access. And also there is no routine monitoring of uh, different health program that were running uh, through gov uh, government or through a, a different uh, donor. Uh, and also to support uh, evidence-based or uh, data-driven decision-making uh, also there were, that was lacking. And also um, on time accessibility of the data was um, uh, a challenge that uh, HMIS data, uh, the frequency for the re uh, reporting for the routine HMIS data were uh, on a monthly basis. However, uh, the, the final uh, uh, version which arriving to the uh, central HQ, uh, it was taking three months. And also since there was uh, uh, different data sources, so uh, while someone trying to triangulate uh, data and do some uh, triangulation analysis or cross-cutting analysis that was uh, uh, very complicated and uh, was not possible. So therefore, uh, we uh, started uh, DHIS2 as a data warehousing. The process was uh, uh, at the beginning, uh, we uh, had conducted uh, two main assessment uh, at the national level, uh, the country level. Uh, first of all was the HMIS uh, um, uh, different systems or the databases uh, that were at the ministry. Uh, we assess all those and uh, identify the potential uh, uh, sources for the data warehousing. And also we assess the infrastructure or the feasibility of the implementation of having online system as a DHIS2. And then uh, we uh, formed a data warehouse uh, uh, development task force team, which we called uh, DWD. And these, uh, this team were representative of different donors, different partners like WHO uh, itself, the MOPH and USID and some other uh, uh, donor or supporter. And uh, uh, all, then uh, this team reviewed different options for data warehousing platform, whether we uh, should go for uh, custom development of the data warehousing or uh, having some uh, ready-made solution as a DHIS2. Uh, checking all those pro, pros and cons, and then uh, the uh, DHIS2 were selected and, uh, uh, as a data warehousing platform or a national HMI system. And uh, in the first version, um, the HMIS, which has a different modules in EMIS, it stands for uh, Expectation Management Information System in Pharmaceutical and also HRMIS. These were different uh, data sources at the first version that we would like to uh, have in the data warehouse. And uh, for the implementation process, uh, we developed a scale up or we called it an institu institutionalization plan. So the, this plan uh, really helped us. That was a three years plan. And also part of this plan, we did uh, some do other donor engagement, as I mentioned. And uh, uh, a part of this plan was all the development of the, the different uh, uh, system and capacity building, and also some required uh, resources for the implementation, like uh, some equipment for uh, uh, infrastructure. And then uh, a, a part of this plan was also uh, 31 different data sources uh, at overall uh, the data warehousing uh, to have uh, 31 different data sources or data marts. Uh, since, as I mentioned, uh, there was uh, legacy data or uh, MS access based data at the ministry, and uh, we developed uh, a custom ETL, uh, Extract, Transform, and Load application, that's uh, to uh, transform and load that uh, MS access data to the DHIS2. So uh, that was also quite a lengthy process. So data from uh, 2003 up to uh, 2020 all were based in, in uh, MS Access and we 
loaded all the uh, that data about like uh, 17 years data to uh, to that ETL uh, to the data warehouse, and also uh, to to easy the um, uh, the use of the system, uh, we localized uh, all the interface and also all the metadata that we had uh, in the system. We translated to local language. And also to support uh, sustainability of the system, different types of documentation uh, will be developed uh, in a close co uh, collaboration with the uh, HMIS Department of Minister of Public Health. And also we uh, created uh, another uh, group which we called a data warehouse core technical working group. So that group is uh, the main responsible team uh, which is leading under uh, HMIS at the ministry. And uh, this group is responsible for all the system development, system maintenance, and capacity building. Uh, since the DHIS2 was new in the country, uh, we did uh, um, many uh, DHIS2 standard academies. Uh, some academies were supported at the country as a, we uh, invited uh, HESP India and we conducted uh, three in country. Uh, information use, customization for cracker and customize, uh, 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 aggregate level customization academy and country. Uh, and also we supported um, HMIS, uh, uh, other staff to attend uh, different academies uh, at the different countries. And also to make easy uh, data analysis and uh, 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 data use, we developed uh, 59 different public dashboards uh, uh, in the DHIS2 and also out of the DHIS2. I mean, out of the DHIS2 is some uh, dashboard that we have without user authentication. So uh, that's a public uh, dashboards. Uh, we specifically one designed for COVID-19 and also there's a HMIS public portal also currently in the development stage. That's also uh, DHIS2. Uh, web uh, the dashboard module is uh, customized and uh, will be bypassed the authentication and also uh, enhanced with some additional features to fulfill our requirements. Uh, in addition to that, we had uh, some custom development as well uh, as we have uh, um, uh, here in the country, uh, pay for p uh, or uh, uh, based on performance payments mechanism of the health system or uh, uh, for that, we have a, a custom dashboards uh, which analyze all those uh, data and based on that uh, analysis payment is made to the uh, different uh, uh, implementer angel or service delivery angels. And also the COVID-19 dashboard also requires some custom uh, development and uh, we had that uh, also as a public uh, uh, dashboard. And also other, uh, uh, beside that, uh, we also developed a web-based um, uh, master health facility that's, uh, uh, which uh, is uh, serving as an administrative boundary for the system, uh, uh, usually the org units or implementer or donor information. So that's also interacting with um, DHIS2 uh, through API. So this is uh, our uh, big picture of the DHIS2 or the data warehousing. Uh, our instance is uh, quite com uh, complex, uh, so we have uh, uh, these aggregate uh, data sources and uh, we have these tracker or event-based uh, um, uh, programs that's uh, all in a one instance uh, uh, we are using. And some of the data that uh, I previously mentioned that we, uh, especially the HMIS legacy data and also for some other uh, data sources, we uh, uploaded or uh, loaded through this uh, ETL process. Uh, in the country, we are using uh, all those uh, three uh, modules of the uh, DHIS2. Also, we are using aggregate, event, or tracker. Specifically, the track uh, tracking uh, for the COVID uh, COVID case tracking, we are using uh, uh, this, this standard which uh, standard application or module which is released by University of Oslo. In addition to that, we have some custom uh, development, custom program for uh, our uh, uh, COVID-19 uh, uh, case tracking, uh, similarly for vaccination as well. Uh, current, our instance, uh, uh, as I mentioned, we have uh, 59 uh, different program or thematic area dashboards. 
In a total, we have 77 data sets uh, in the, our uh, current version. And uh, we have more than uh, uh, 1,600 uh, uh, active users. Uh, and similarly, we have uh, 31 programs. But the most important that's uh, as a, uh, our instance is quite big. We have more than 227 million data values uh, that's uh, representing uh, or the data from all those uh, different data sources. Uh, these are the, the public custom de developed dashboards uh, that's uh, specifically uh, for COVID. Uh, and also um, we have that's, uh, uh, we call the program here, Sehat Mandid, which is a multi-donor program that's uh, um, uh, all those uh, payment process uh, or uh, the verification of the data is also happening through the DHIS too. And uh, also, uh, this is our uh, uh, public dashboard or HMIS uh, country level uh, dashboards, uh, which uh, uh, all those uh, 59 uh, dashboards that uh, I uh, talk about all uh, publicly available uh, uh, for a user without any uh, user or password. Uh, for the data warehousing, uh, still we are working and uh, we envision uh, envisioning that uh, to, to have some uh, more prog progress and achievement. Uh, so uh, based on this roadmap, uh, specifically, uh, we are working uh, uh, on a capacity building and also some additional resources that's uh, uh, nowadays uh, coming in that uh, the, the current data warehousing will be enhanced. Uh, and also since uh, there's uh, we, uh, uh, the legacy data that's imported through the ETL, uh, so uh, uh, some data quality issue are over there. So now also we are focusing on the data quality and data cleaning process as well. And also uh, some uh, other um, custom apps also we have in a plan that's uh, for next year, we will have some uh, uh, apps uh, uh, that which is developed in country. Uh, and also for uh, interoperability, um, uh, that the master help us with that, that I mentioned. So for that, uh, also uh, will be uh, the system will be interoperable uh, uh, with uh, that um, uh, org unit. Or since the security situation here is uh, so tough, so lots of changes happening uh, in terms of closing health facility or uh, adding some health facility or some outbreak. There's some temporary uh, health facility to be activated for that purpose. Uh, we have that uh, master health facility that all those uh, interaction should be happen in that master uh, health facility uh, database. And then through EPI, that uh, same will be replicated to the DHIS too. Uh, during our uh, implementation process, uh, we had quite challenges. Uh, one of the main uh, challenges uh, uh, that even currently we are suffering from that uh, lack of support of the DHI to instant for solar calendar. So in the country, uh, Afghanistan, and similarly, uh, some other countries like uh, Iran or Tajikistan, they are using a uh, solar calendar for their reporting. But unfortunately, uh, this uh, feature is lacking. And uh, however, we did some many time advocacy uh, for the core team uh, of the University of Oslo, uh, that that's, this uh, should be integrated part of the core data is to next release, but uh, due to other priorities, uh, still it's uh, not scheduled. So we hope that uh, gets uh, some uh, priority and this feature also will be fulfilled by the is to next releases. Also, IT infrastructure is still a, uh, a challenge in the country uh, as a, uh, the data collection or data reporting uh, now in the DHIS2 is happening at the provincial level. So uh, that's still an issue. And also for the use, um, uh, we uh, um, low com computer knowledge at the field at the some uh, also this will were a challenge at some extent this uh, has been addressed that we had uh, extensive workshop uh, or mentorship that's uh, we conducted uh, somehow it's uh, uh, it's good but uh, still it's uh, need a lot of effort uh, to be uh, done in this area so that's conclude my presentation thank you if there's any questions so uh, I will be happy to respond. 
So unless there are any last questions now, I'd like to thank all the presenters and, and all the participants for joining this session. And um, wish you all the rest of the day um, productive and, and uh, interesting in, in the continuation of the annual conference. Thank you.